Hello and welcome to another Planet Destiny exotic weapon review. Today we'll be taking a look at the much hyped Sleeper Simulant. To get this weapon you had to collect some Dark Age fusion rifles found randomly in the world and then investigate a strange beacon coming from the Warmind. I've already put out videos going over the quest process on the channel and a link to those are in the description. At the end of this chain of events you get the Sleeper Simulant, an exotic heavy fusion rifle. Before we get into the actual review, let's go over the perks. Unfortunately, as of writing this review, Sleeper Simulant has not become unclassified in our database, so we don't know the exact numbers on stats. So when I speak about aim assistance, I'm only talking from experience. So the first perk that is always active is Sleeper Simulant. It allows the weapon's laser to overpenetrate enemies and ricochet once on hard surfaces. This is a pretty fun perk, but it isn't entirely useful. I think it's mainly there just so the weapon feels right. I'm shooting a giant laser cannon. I want it to over-penetrate targets. Since it bounces off a surface, that just kind of fits in with the theme as well. Overall though, the perk isn't that useful. For muzzle perks, we have CQB Ballistics, greatly reduced recoil, but significant penalty to range. For smooth ballistics, we have increased recoil and boost to range. There's only one choice here, smooth ballistics. With the changes to the range stat, you really want to maximize that since higher range means you have a higher aim assist. And on this weapon, you want to maximize your potential to hit precision shots since you can get the most damage. Sacrificing range for stability when you have ample time between shots to correct for recoil just doesn't really make any sense. The first unlocked perk is hip fire, which increases accuracy while firing from the hip. This perk is okay, but it doesn't really help you overall. It's most noticeable in PvP, where you don't really have to go for precision shots, since a body shot will do more than enough damage to kill anyone, even an active Sunbreaker. For the selectable perks, we have Speed Reload, which increases reload speed, Custom Optics, which increases the zoom when aiming down sights, and finally, there's Injection Mold, which increases the stability and handling at the cost of range. Again, here we have a pretty clear choice of speed reload. You will be reloading this thing a lot since it usually only takes one or two shots to take out a target, and you want to have a full mag when you need it again. Injection Mold does increase the handling, but at the cost of range, which is just too important of a stat on a weapon that needs to land precision shots. The final perk is Activate Icolos, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. It upgrades the laser to allow multiple ricochets on hard surfaces. Like the first perk, it just makes the weapon fun. Yes, the ricochet rounds can kill you, as seen in these clips. The enemy's probe is out. Shut it down. Probe is out. <laughs> I really don't mind this though, because I think it's hilarious. However, the ricochet rounds are incredibly unreliable and will rarely hit anything. I've seriously hit myself with the ricochet round more than I have hit targets. Alright, so now that we know what the perks all do, let's get into the PvP and PvE sections. I'll start off with PvE since that's going to be the longest. Alright, so this gun had the unfortunate circumstance of being called Galahorn's competition in that Game Informer article, which is why I think a lot of the community is unhappy with its performance. But if we can just take a look at all of the year two exotics, we can see that there's a fundamental shift in the way these weapons are designed. In year one, we had the holy trinity of Fatebringer, Blackhammer, and Galahorn rounding off the heavy slot because in every single scenario, even ones where Arkburn was active, Galahorn was probably the best thing to use as a heavy. That simply isn't the case anymore with exotics. They're designed to be used in different loadouts for different encounters. I know it sounds like I'm straying off topic here, but I feel like this point needs to be made so my views on Sleeper Simulant can be fully understood. So the Sleeper Simulant in PvE is good, but only in select scenarios. Fortunately, these scenarios are where you would want a heavy weapon to do a ton of damage, but only if you can reliably hit precision shots. The fight that this becomes most evident in is the Death Singers fight. Traditionally, players have been using Black Spindle or Touch of Malice here to do damage, but are having some difficulties. The Death Singers flinch a lot when crit, so landing multiple precision shots with the Spindle does become difficult, especially if your group isn't clearing adds and they're making your scope move around a bunch. Sleeper Simulant doesn't really care about any of that. Its high aim assist means it delivers a full payload straight to the target's head without much aiming. However, the Death Singers is probably the only fight that it's abundantly clear that the Sleeper Simulant does well. The War Priest is debatable, but having a full fire team with the gun will lead to some serious damage done, provided everyone switches to snipers to make up for the low magazine size. 
Golgoroth is out of the question for Sleeper Simulant, though. Black Spindle reigns supreme because it's just too easy to crit Golgoroth for your entire ammo reserves. Special ammo is also a lot more prevalent than heavy ammo, which makes Black Spindle even better for doing damage in that particular fight. Outside of the raid, Sleeper Simulant is again going to be situational. The main argument against using it is that Black Spindle will do more damage. And that pretty much holds true, but only if you land every single precision shot. Consecutive precision shots are difficult to hit on a number of bosses, so Black Spindle becomes more difficult to use and less likely that you'll get its full damage potential. For the most part, I feel that a normal sniper rifle plus sleeper simulant will lead to an easier time when going into damage phases. However, unlike a lot of other heavy weapons, you don't really want to use a sleeper simulant on tier 1 enemies, and even some majors. The reason for this is its low ammo count. You're only holding 7 rounds, and as of this review, fusion rifle ammo perks do not increase it. The only way to get more shots is to be a warlock with the alchemist raiment, or use year 1 armor with the heavy ammo increase on it, but that really isn't viable since that decreases your light level. So chances are you'll go a while without finding another heavy ammo brick. Due to these ammo constraints, it's best to use this against targets that you would normally have to spend a bit fighting. Bosses and high health tier 2 mobs are going to be best friends with the sleeper simulant. Okay, so to put this in the simplest terms possible, if you want a weapon to do lots of damage in under 9 seconds, go for sleeper simulant. If you want steady damage over 15 seconds, go for black spindle. And if you want high damage past that, use the touch of malice. So switching gears, let's go over the sleeper simulant in PvP. This gun kills everything in one shot. It doesn't matter about precision. It does 595 to the body, or if you really want to get some overkill in there, it does 743 precision. A body shot will kill an active sunbreaker, which is pretty much the strongest thing in the game right now. Without any ammo increases, it gets you four shots, which I think is the perfect amount of heavy ammo for this weapon in PvP. You essentially get four free kills with this gun, provided you aim in the general area of someone. The high aim assist I spoke about earlier is still apparent in PvP, and it leads to some pretty hilarious kills. Again though, the ricochet rounds don't really play into effect here. But is this gun worth using over other heavy weapon alternatives, and even other exotics? To put it simply, no. Not in PvP. I would much, much rather have Thunderlord or Truth as my exotic. Even the Arc Exotic Sword would be a better alternative. The killing potential on those weapons is so much higher. I know I will 100% get 4 kills with Truth. I will 100% slaughter a bunch of people with Thunderlord in the right circumstances. Even the Boltcaster will just allow me to block shots and soak up the other team's heavy ammo. So why should you use Sleeper in PvP? Because it's hilarious, it's fun, it's stupid, and that's why I play video games. I want to laugh every time I watch my friend accidentally shoot a wall and kill himself with this gun. I want to go absolutely crazy whenever I get a multi-kill with it, especially if I have no idea where the other enemy was. The random nature of the ricochet rounds allows for some interesting random plays to happen. So if you think that sounds like a good time, then pick up this gun when you hear that heavy ammo call go out. But if you're being serious and you want to win that heavy ammo round in Trials, keep using your rocket launcher or your machine gun. The cosmetics of the gun certainly tell a story. You're instantly reminded of Rasputin with all the square blocks coming off the sides, and it holds true to the other things that bear his mark. The ACDO feedback gauntlets and the pocket infinity all have this similar design scheme. The sound is my absolute favorite thing about it though. You can just feel a huge power building up with every single shot, and your ears even ring a bit after it. Overall, Sleeper Simulant is a good weapon in certain situations. By no means should you use this as your go-to heavy weapon. Swords are going to be better in fights where you know you can get away with slashing the boss and not getting crushed. Black Spindle is still going to be better for Golgoroth. Simulant can work itself into a lot of loadouts though. The only real true disappointing thing about the weapon that we have now is that it doesn't really change much from when you initially get it to when it's fully upgraded. It suffers from the No Land Beyond syndrome there. Sure, you can ricochet the rounds more, but they don't have any extra aim assistance on them, so they're going to be either a light show for you and your enemies, or a death when one comes whizzing back into your face. The only thing you really get from upgrading this gun is some more range and reload speed. It could use more ammo as well. I think having 9 total shots would be the perfect amount. It seems like you're just starting to have fun with the gun before it sadly runs out of ammo. 
In PvP, I'd stick with using a rocket or machine gun since the kill potential with those is just so much higher. Even a sword is better due to its blocking utility. The sleeper simulant in PvP is just a montage weapon. It's something to get those hilarious multi-kills due to the random nature of ricochet rounds. And one final thing. The description of this gun has caused a lot of debate amongst the community. It reads, Subroutine Ikelos, status equals complete. Midnight Exigent, status equals still in progress. Many think that this last part means that there is more to come from the weapon and it maybe isn't in its final form yet. I'm going to dispel those theories right now. Midnight Exigent in layman's terms is the way Rasputin refers to the darkness and the Guardian's war against it. In the description, he is simply stating that he has made this gun for us, and that's the subroutine Ikelos being complete, and that we are still fighting the darkness, that's Midnight Exigent. I am absolutely 100% certain that there is nothing else coming from this weapon in terms of upgrades, so let's put that idea to rest, please. The weapon we have now is the weapon we are getting. I hope you guys found this review helpful. Personally, I've been enjoying using this gun simply because it's fun, and that's all that really matters to me. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.